Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Now we're now in day for those who've been doing the, the consecration fast. If you just joined us late, this is day number five. Mama Bear, there you go. Mama Bear, I forgot. Mama Bear in UK and Michael in. Um, this is day number five of our consecration fast. A day five of 30. So we're, we're, we're staying strong. And, and remember, the way you stay strong is just, just to keep in prayer whenever you feel like the craving of whatever you, you're fasting on. Remember, we're talking about different ways of fasting. If, if you missed the lesson, uh, go back to uh, uh, the lesson that says start fasting the right way. Go back to that particular lesson to get all the real details. But just a short version, we're fasting on whatever your flesh is out of control. Not just food. Sometimes people don't have any trouble with food. People have trouble with other parts of their life. So in our fasting on every January, we focus on whatever it is in your life. What part of your flesh is out of control and that's what we're fasting on that activity food social media phone sex whatever it is people people say well isn't it, it just food no whatever your whatever your flesh is craving we're putting the flesh under under a submission to the spirit allowing the spirit to take over and the more you pray during fasting whenever you feel the craving answer the craving with prayer and that's part of our lesson today the, if you notice, I'm going to start with a poem, uh, but the fasting, fasting, prayer power, fasting, prayer power. Why is your prayer more powerful when you're fasting? Because you're praying more. You're praying more intensely. You're praying specifically against an attack that your body's craving. So even though it's, it's, it's called Poetic Lesson, I have a poem I want to share that I actually I wrote last New Year, but this poem applies to whatever year you're starting. Because we don't want last year to come in this year. We don't want anything negative of last year to come into our new year, amen? So that's that's what we're focusing on now. The poem, the poem is actually called, the poem is called, I Dare Not Go Another Year. I Dare Not Go Into Another Year. That's. That's the name of the poem. I dare not go into another year. And the and the poem is talking about the things we're not taking with us. There are certain things we are not taking in 2020. Some things we are, the good things we are, the things we're improving on, but the things that are holding us back, whatever was holding us back, we're not taking that into 2020. That ended. That was now an old thing. Anything that was trying to pull you away from God, that is an old thing. Anything that was lying to you, got to go. Old thing. Lies, cheats, deception. People we need to get rid of. Some people, some people we can't take in 2020. Some people need to stay in 2019. Because if we have anyone in your life who is bringing venom into your life, they need to stay in 2019. Don't bring venom into 2020 because behold, all things become new. So what we're focusing on in the new year is bringing all the goodness of things into our life. We're making sure that we, we're staying focused on things we need. We're staying focused on things that we're trying to make sure we don't have anything. Remember, I hold all long comments until at the end. Amen? Now the poem is called this. The poem goes like this. I dare not go into another year bringing garbage from my past. The things that try to steal my joy and make depression last. I dare not take my eyes off God. This year, I'm turning it around. Is Jesus my Lord and Savior now, who keeps me from feeling down? I dare not let a negative thought or things or people ruin my life. For now, I know when I listen to them, it brings me nothing but strife. I've been abused, misused, neglected, dejected, left for dead and torn apart. Oh Lord, there is nothing left for me but to pray for a brand new start. I dare not believe the devil's lies. For he, his lies, he lies at every turn. For I know that if I listen to him, no doubt I'll surely burn. So Lord, Lord, as I enter a brand new year, I'm keeping my eyes on you. I'm giving you all the pain of my past, knowing you will see me through. I dare not go into another year. 
So that's part of that. That is something I see every. I wrote it last year, but that's something we need to see every year. Whatever, whatever was not like God that comes into our life in a year, and that year is over, that stays in that year. We don't take it. We're only taking it into a new year. The things of God, the things that are improving us, the things that are empowering us, the things that help us stay focused on the Word, focused on our walk, focused on our goal. You want to surround yourself with people, with thoughts and attitudes and goals and things that are God that keep you on the mark of getting closer and closer to God. And so we have to commit to do that. See, God's not going to make us do it. We have to commit. I'm not doing this this year. No, this year, I'm not doing that this year. This year, that stops. Whatever it is, this year, that stops. Whatever it was last year that, that pulled you down, oh, no, no. This year, that stops. I'm not taking that into this year. I'm not taking that into this year. Whatever it is, you, you have to make that statement. And once you say it, you got to live it. Don't, don't. oh, well, you know, I just gave it. No, 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 you, you'll give in. No, no, that has to stop. If you want to prove yourself, in any way, whatever was keeping you from improving yourself last year, that's got to stop. This year is a new you. Whatever you're doing from this point on is a new you. You are rewriting who you are, your behavior, your ways, your goals, your prayers, your walk with the Lord. Whatever it is, this is a new day. Behold, all things become new. And that's the purpose of this lesson today. This is what we focus on this entire month as we pray our prayers each day in prayer and fasting, each day you get stronger and stronger because you're praying more. Whatever you're fasting on, you should be praying more because that craving or whatever, whatever it is you're fasting on, that craving is causing you to pray more. And the more you pray, the more powerful you get, the more powerful your prayers, the stronger your faith, the stronger your trust. Because what? Faith comes by what? Hearing hearing by the word of God. And the more you speak the word, the more you pray, the more you talk to the Lord, you get stronger and stronger in spirit. And the stronger you get in spirit, the more power you have over the things in this world which try to pull you away from God. That's the purpose. Whenever you feel weak, fast and pray. Because usually when we feel weak, it's because the flesh is getting weak. And that means we need to increase our, our spirit time our spirit must be the one in charge, not the flesh. If you get tired, your flesh is tired, but your spirit can bring you up. Your spirit can re-energize you. Your spirit can give you motivation. Your spirit can conquer procrastination. Your spirit can, can counter everything if you're feeding the spirit. So when we're fasting and praying, we are feeding the spirit more than usual to get that control back over our flesh so that all the cravings and things we know we shouldn't be doing, we have control over it because now we just remind the flesh that the spirit is in control, amen? Now, the, the text for today, the text for today, our, 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 our title, fasting, fasting prayer power, prayer power. In order to do the things we talked about, in order to do the things we talked about, you have to really truly believe in your prayers. I can't tell you, before I started Golden Nuggets, half the prayers I said for people on the channel were people who did not believe in their own prayer. If you are a follower of Christ and you believe in Jesus, you got to believe in your prayers. If you don't believe in your prayers, you don't believe in God is going to answer your prayer. See, a lot of people say, could you pray for me? Because my prayers, not, my prayers don't work. I said, why do you think your prayers don't work? Well, God, God hadn't answered. How do you know God get an answer? Sometimes God says wait. Sometimes God says no. That's not for you right now. He didn't. He answered. He answered. You thought he didn't answer. No. The answer is wait. The answer is no. That's not for you right now. Or no period. That's not good for you. See, sometimes God has to tell us what's good for us. Because we get so into the flesh of the thing. The flesh wants it. But God says that's not good for you. No. I'm not going to answer that prayer because that's going to take you down the wrong road. No, you need to wait. It's not now. Your time is not now for that thing. So God always answers. Sometimes he doesn't answer the way we want and we think he didn't answer. No, no. He answers every prayer. So we got to trust that. We must believe that he is 
and he is a rewarder to those who diligently seek him. Hebrews 11, 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please God, and those who come to him must believe that he is. Is what? The miracle worker, the mountain mover, the door opener, the healer, whatever it is. We must believe that he is. Otherwise, why are you praying if you don't believe he is what he is? Because your prayers are just words. If you don't believe God is who he is, why are you praying? Because you got to believe. Mark 11, 24, our text, Mark 11, 24. When you pray, believe you have received it and you shall have it. Be, don't just say it and wonder. You're not wondering. No, when you pray, you know you're going to have it because God is answering that prayer. We just don't know the when. We just don't know when because our prayers are answered in God's time, not our time. Again, the answers come in God's time, not our time. That's what also sometimes steals our faith. We think God again didn't answer. No, it comes in God's time. So when you're waiting for a prayer to be answered, keep thanking him every day. What have you prayed for? Thank you, Lord. Thank you for that. Thank you for that answer. Thank you for the healing. Thank you for the provision. Whatever you're praying for, after you pray, while you're waiting, thank him every day. Because if you pray, believe you have received it and you shall have it. And the way you know you've received it is keep thanking him. We don't know the when, so while we're waiting, thank you, Jesus, for the answer. Thank you, Jesus, for the guidance. Thank you, Jesus, for, for the victory. It's already done. It's already done in the spirit. But we've got to hold on by faith. And the more we say thank you, Jesus, for that whatever it is, we know it's already done. It's already done. We just wait for it to manifest in the flesh and say thank you, Lord, and get excited. Excited, because see, I get excited when I don't know the when. Because when you don't know the when, it could come tomorrow or years from now. But we, we always think wait for the Lord means 20, 30 years from now. No, wait for the Lord means whenever it comes, it's going to be right on time. And tomorrow could be the time. So just to know that tomorrow could possibly be the answer to my prayer. That can, you should have excitement every day. You should see the excitement every single day. Because you know, you know I can feel it. Oh, I can feel it. Oh, thank you, Lord. I can feel it. Oh, it's right here. I know it's coming. I know it's coming. And that excitement keeps you thanking him every day. Don't, don't worry about the wind. Don't start looking at your clock. When you pray, believe it. It's done. It's done. All the way to the way. The other, the other uh, text. So the text for the day is both Mark 11, 24. When you pray, believe you have received it. And Hebrews 11, 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Those are our texts for the day. Those two scriptures. Hebrews 11, 6 and Mark 11, 24. Now, most of this lesson today is scriptures we know. But when we're fasting this entire month, you, like I said before, this is when you use all your favorite scriptures. Now, I have some, I have some scriptures specifically today I want to share with you, which is what you're meditating on, keeping your prayer power keeping your prayer power because the key the key is throughout the time we're fasting and praying this month the devil's gonna be lying he's gonna be throwing lies at you he's gonna deceive you he's gonna try whatever he can to break you in this fast because he does not want you to be stronger in the lord he doesn't want you praying more powerful he wants to distract you he wants to lie to you he wants you to look away from the lord when you're trying to look closer to the lord and we know he's gonna do it and the way we combat that is what? Increase your prayer time. Increase your praise. Increase your prayer. Increase your worship. Increase your stillness. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. So whenever you're under attack, whenever you're under attack, just get closer to the Lord. Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You're only under shadow when you're close to it. Let me say it again. You're only under the shadow of something when you're close enough to the object causing the shadow. So when you're under the shadow of the Almighty, that means you're seeing his face every day. You want to get as close as to, you're not looking at the problem. Don't look at the problem. Look at God who can solve the problem. Don't worry about the debt. Look at the one who can provide. Don't worry about the fear. Look at the one who can conquer. See, we, we look not at things that are seen, but at things that are unseen. Things that are seen are temporary. Things that are unseen are eternal. So we know that whatever we look at, 
Whatever we're looking at right now, whatever we're looking at, it happened. But guess what? It's going to change. We'll reap if you faint not. For everything, there is a season. For everything, there is a season. So if you're going through a season of hardship, guess what? At some point, it's going to end. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Ooh, I get joy all my day. For, if, no, for every season, whatever the season you're going through, there is going to be an end to that season, good or bad. So if you're going through a hard time right now, just praise God all oh, this season by the end because we be men do it for a night, but joy comes in the morning. For everything, there's a season. So this season I'm in right now is about to change to something else. Amen. So we, we hold on to that. And it doesn't matter what the season is, when you keep your mind stayed on him because we trust him, that helps us make it through whatever the season, good or bad, good or bad. Season, sometimes seasons are good, sometimes seasons are bad, but God never changes. God is the same yesterday, today, forevermore. God never changes. So when we hold on to God's unchanging hand, it doesn't matter what the season is because God is the same yesterday, today, forevermore. That's why we have to make sure we never let go of God's unchanging hand. Never let go of God's unchanging hand because he never changes. He's with us through every season. Whatever the season is, God is with us in every season. And that's what we have to hold on to. Amen. Because one of one of the one of the scriptures, of course, of Philippians, turn to Philippians 4 6. Philippians 4 6. Philippians 4 6. Now we know. Hey Erica, Miami. <clears throat> we know all these scriptures. But the reason I'm putting these together today is this is our assignment. If you need some scriptures to keep your prayer power, your prayer power ignited, especially during the fasting. We're going to start at uh, 4, 6, and 7. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your, mar your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So that's the beginning part right there. Be anxious for nothing. See, that's that's the battle we face. Even when you're going, even when you're going through fasting, even when you're going through fasting, the devil tries to bring up problems in your mind and stress in your mind. The, the devil tries to attack you with all kinds of thoughts to make you think you can't make it. And whenever you under attack mentally and spiritually, increase increase your word time whatever it is word music bible studies feed your spirit whenever you feel discouraged when fasting and praying that's not an accident that's the devil trying to pull you out of your fast i mean i tried to make it i failed my fast i failed no no you didn't fail you just had a weak moment just say lord forgive me i failed today lord but i'm getting back on the horse even if you did slip up and you must made, made a mistake on that day don't look at it as failure just say lord forgive me Forgive me, I had a weak moment today, Lord. I, I fell off the horse today, Lord. But I'm, I'm, I'm getting back on, Lord. Give me strength to make it the rest of the way. See, the, the important thing to remember is when you try to hold on to a goal or to a fast, when the devil tries to make you feel like when you mess up, give up. See, that's what the devil wants. He makes you want, if you ate something or whatever you're fasting on, if you slipped today and you made a mistake, the devil wants to make you think, well, you might as well give up now. Might as well give up now because... You failed. You failed your fast. No, 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 no. I just had a weak moment today. I had a weak moment today. Guess what? A weak moment today is going to be victory tomorrow. Amen. So we'll make sure. We'll make sure. I hold on. Uh, hold the scripture until at the end of June Pepsi. Hold the scripture. As a matter of fact, it's on my list as a matter of fact. So we got to make sure that we know who God is. We know who God is. And we know what his word has. You write down. And you, you write down all your favorite scriptures. You write down all your favorite word and things you want to say because the problem is you got to stay focused on the word. Focus, that's why we fast and pray. More focus on the word. Amen. So be anxious for nothing. Being in the word, that is a a command. It doesn't say, I wish, I wish you'd be anxious for nothing. No. When we read the word of God and we're getting instructions for the word, the word says, be anxious for nothing. Why? Because we trust him. Be anxious for nothing. Why? Because we believe he is who he is. 
The reason we be anxious for nothing is because we got to believe that God is the way maker, the mountain mover, the miracle worker, the great physician in whatever it is we need in our life. We got to believe that. And the more you pray, the closer you get to God, the stronger your belief, the stronger your faith, the more you feel his presence. Because when you feel his presence, that increases everything there is about God when you're in his presence. And that's why we want to be in his presence even more during the fasting and prayer month. Amen. Of uh, first John, first John 5, 6. First John chapter 5. First John chapter 5. First John 5, we're gonna start look at uh, 514. 514. First John 514. This is the confidence which we have before him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. See that that's why I was mentioning before. Thank you, Lon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dana. Uh, now that's that's why we have to remember that. That's why we have to remember. This is the confidence, the confidence that we have. When we ask something of the Lord, believe you have received it. Believe he is who he is. Don't just be asking something and don't think he's going to answer it. Why are you praying if you don't believe God is going to answer it? You might as well just go and, and, and read a novel. Because if you're asking for the Lord for something, believe you have received it. Believe the answer of your prayer is coming in God's time. But when, that's why we got to have confidence. You got to have confidence that when you say in the name of Jesus, Jesus said it he, he, of John 14, 13, 14. These things I do, you can do also and greater things. These you can do because I go to the father that the father may be glorified. That's John 14, 12 to 14. He says, these things I do, you can do also because I go to the father that the father may be glorified. And then he repeats himself. Truly, I say to you. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. And we got to believe that. We got to believe that. Don't just be, just don't be saying prayers for fun. P say prayers, believing you will receive it. Believe things are going to move. Believe what you're praying for is going to happen. And when you pray, thank him for it afterwards. Because now that shows, Lord, I thank you, Lord. I can't wait, Lord, to get that answer. I can't wait to get my healing. I can't wait to get delivered. Because I pray for it. I believe I got my victory. I like, thank you, Jesus. And you start shouting. Even before it's there, you start shouting. You start shouting because you know it's already done. It's already done. It's already on the way. And the way you keep feeding your spirit and slapping the devil is because every day you wake up thanking the Lord for the answered prayer, you slap the devil. Because the devil wants you to give up, to think your prayer didn't answer. But when you wake up, thank you, Lord. I'm getting closer to my answer. Thank you, Jesus. I'm getting closer to my healing. Thank you, Jesus. It's already done. I'm already healed. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. The devil can't stand that. The devil doesn't want you waking up in joy. The devil does not want you to wake up in joy. He wants to wake up. He wants to wake you up depressed. He wants you to wake up to worry, going through all kinds of anxiety attacks. That's what the devil wants. But when you focus, like Philippians 4 8, meditate on these things, things of God. That automatically is resisting the devil. Resist the devil and what? Resist the devil and he will flee. And that's what we focus on, the things we talked about earlier. The whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God. Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. The whole armor of God. See, when you remember the whole armor of God, the authority to trample over all the power of the enemy. And Psalm 91, those are the power three. Those are the power three scripture chapters. Psalm 91. Ephesians 10, uh, uh, six, uh, Ephesians 6, 10 through 18, Ephesians 6, 10 through 18, and Luke 10, 19. See, those three right there are reminding you who you are in Christ. And see, when we're doing these other scriptures, when you know who you are in Christ, and you're using power in the name of Jesus, power in the blood of Jesus, and that's who you are in Christ, we got that power. We got the authority. Psalm 91 protection, the whole armor of God. When you're walking in those three things, when you're walking in those three things, you know that God is with you. You know that God's presence is all over you. God's anointing is over you because you're walking in your anointing when you're walking in the word of God. Let me say that again. When you're walking in the word of God, you are walking in your anointing. And that's what you got to make sure you, we, you stay focused on that part. Amen? Turn back on there. Time, 
Turn, turn the car back off. Amen. Praise God. So that's that's why we got to remember. That's why we got to remember to keep immersed in things of God, studying the Word, reading the Word, listen to the Word, uh, listen to gospel music. F keep feeding the Spirit, whatever way, as long as you feed the Spirit every single day, especially during fasting and praying, because you don't want the devil to slip in anywhere. You don't want to slap the devil. You want to slap the devil every turn. As soon as you feel a negative thought, in Jesus' name, go to praise. You can, you don't even need music. You, you feel a negative thought. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. Whatever it is you want to say, whenever you feel a negative thought come over you, don't receive it. Because it's when you receive it, that's when it comes into your spirit, and that's when it takes you down. When you feel it, as soon as you feel the negativity, what? Rebuke it. Bind it, cast it out, and go into praise. Rebuke it, bind it, cast it out, go into praise. So that's, that's you got to remember that because we're under attack. Hey, uh, hey, Michael, see, we're under attack every day. You don't understand. Spiritual warfare does not stop. This is not a war like on TV. Some wars in the world, they stop, they start. No, spiritual warfare is 24-7. That means if we get careless, we're under attack. We got to keep praying, keep on praying. As long as you're praising and praying, praising, praying, praising, praying, you're, you're fighting the attack. You're in the spirit fighting, even though you're walking around on this earth, you think you have a calm day, but you're under attack in the spirit and you're praising God. You're going through your day. Thank you, Jesus. Every time you say, thank you, Jesus, you're getting a victory somewhere that day. Every time you say, praise God, you're getting a victory somewhere that day. Because in the spirit, the battle doesn't stop. So every time you pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God for you. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. Pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God for you. We got to keep that praise on the tip of our tongue. Prayer, tip of your tongue. Whatever it is, keep yourself on fire. And just like David encouraged himself, whatever you know, there's, that's why I told you guys, that's why I told you guys, whenever you feel something coming, man shall live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, the way we activate that is as soon as you feel something come into your life, you start praying. See, we got to be ready to pray, like I say all the time, be ready to pray at the drop of a hat. And that's what prayer without ceasing is all about. You have to wait till you get home. Don't wait till Sunday. No, when you need to pray, you can, step, you can start praying while you're driving. Praise God, thank you, Jesus. Oh Lord, thank you, Lord. Praise God, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise your name. Praise your name. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise your name. Thank you, Jesus. Lord. Hey, you know what? I want you to try. Oh, whoa. You gotta try this. You gotta try this. I want everyone to try this. Next time you're in the car. Next time you're in the car in traffic. Now I want, I want you to watch this. Now, a lot of people get road rage. Because when they're in traffic, they have no peace. They go into panic mode, stress mode, road rage, because they have no peace. I want you to try this. Next time you're in traffic, you're in traffic. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your name, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Praise your name. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, O oh Lord. Glory to your name, O oh Lord. Praise your name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Thank you, Lord. Glory to your name, O oh Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Joe. Oh, Lord, God, thank you, Lord. I need you right now, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Praise your name. I just let, let praise come out. Let the praise flow. I want you to watch what happens. Watch what happens to your spirit. Turn the radio off. Turn the radio off and go into praise. No sound. Just praise. Whatever comes out your mouth. When you're in traffic, watch the road rage leave. Watch peace beyond understanding come over you while everybody else everybody else in traffic is completely <laughs> completely stressed out you sitting there praising god you got the car rocking thank you jesus i thank you Lord. hallelujah la, 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 whatever it is whatever it is you want to do let praise comes out your mouth let the praise come out your mouth whenever you need it not just not just an attack so th that's how you keep yourself that's how you keep yourself encouraged in the Lord. That's how you keep yourself encouraged in the Lord. Because whatever song you pick, whatever song you pick, whatever, it doesn't even have to be music. 
all, we don't need no music. We just need to praise. <laughs> That's what it's all about. As long as you got to praise on the tip of your tongue, and it's personally you, you keep your praise going. Praise your way through. Praise your way to the victory over whatever you go through. See, that's what it's all about. Keep the praise going in everything. I got an entire playlist. I told you guys before. I call I call it my driving my driving shout tape. Is a is a is a is a music collage come montage a collection I put together. It's just shout music back to back. And whenever I'm in stress mode in the car, especially in traffic, I put on the shout tape. And people may be looking at me like I'm crazy. I'm, I'm, I got the car rocking. I just I got my head going. <laughs> people drive up to me. They look at me. What's wrong with that crazy? Is he going crazy? No, I'm not crazy. I'm praising. I'm praising my way through this traffic. Praising my way to I get home. Because I want no stress to anymore. I don't want a stress attack while I'm in traffic. See, you can have, don't, don't get it twisted. I don't know about you guys where you live. But in California, you can have a, a stress attack while you're in the car going one mile an hour, taking two hours to go two miles. You know what you are? So don't let the stress take over. That's right, that's right, Snurks. Nobody does like Jesus. And that's, a, that's good, amen, amen, amen. Miami too? Yes, yeah, so I know a lot of the big cities, you got some terrible traffic. And that traffic can steal your joy. That traffic can steal your praise. That traffic can bring nothing but heaviness. Don't sit there and take it Answer it with praise, whether it's praise music, praise a cappella, just start praising like I just did. Don't even know what to say. Just drive, drive and say, thank you, Jesus. Leave the radio off. Leave the radio off and just drive and praise. Drive and praise. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God is good all the time. God, oh, Lord, I love you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I praise your name, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And get yourself, get yourself on fire. You're going to be on fire for the Lord. Just drive down the street. And that's how we answer the devil trying to steal our joy in whatever it is. This just that's just one example. Whenever you feel under attack, go into praise. Resist the devil. And he will what? Flee. The devil doesn't want you to praise. They ain't a 35 again. They ain't a 35 again. See, devil doesn't want you to praise. And that's why <laughs> Judah Bible say they say to you, bobbing upside. <laughs> Be bobbing what's in your head. That's right. Like you do whatever song, whatever song gets you excited, whatever song gets you excited, go for it. Because when you when you just let the joy of the Lord is your strength. Remember, the joy, the joy of the Lord is your strength. And when you go into praise mode, there is no heaviness, attack, depression, worry, fear. I don't care what you're going through. When you go into praise mode, that thing's got to stop. That attack's got to stop. I know you got some things to work on. You got some things you got to get up. You got to get through. But when you're in praise mode, can nothing come in and disturb your praise? Because that is God moving in your life to give you victory. Praise your way through. Praise your way to the victory over whatever you're going through. You got to live that. Praise your way through. Praise your way to the victory over whatever you're going through. I want you to live by that phrase this year. Live by that phrase this year. Whatever you're going through, whatever you're going, I'm going to praise my way through. Praise my way to the victory over whatever I'm going through. And I'm going to praise my way to victory. Praise my way to provision. Praise my way to protection. Praise my way to healing. Keep on praising because that activates, that activates God in every cell in your body. Every part of your body feels it. You know, see, dis-ease, what is the same word, dis-ease and disease spell the same thing, spell the same way. You just put a hyphen, dis-ease, take the dash out, disease, dis-ease, if, if you don't capture that dis-ease and let it stay in your, in your spirit long enough, in your mind, that dis-ease can manifest into a disease in your body when it's ulcers, uh, stress-induced high blood pressure, that's dis-ease that's turned to a disease in your body because you didn't capture it in your mind. Capture every thought. Second Corinthians 10, 5. Capture every thought that's not of God that comes to your mind. And see, these are all things we got to remember, especially in the month of prayer and fasting because our mind is under attack. When you try to stay true to a fasting and praying, your mind is under attack. I don't know if I could do this. How long I got to get this day? Man, this day five, I got to get to day 30. How am I going to do that? What are you doing? You're entertaining doubt. 
How am I going to do that? How am I going to do it? How am I going to make it 30 days? This is day five. No, no. What you going to do? You, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. First of all, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can't do it. But through Christ, I can. Let me say it again. Through yourself, you may have trouble. But when you say, I can do all things through Christ, all of a sudden, you get willpower. All of a sudden, you get stronger. Because you just said, I can do all things through through Christ, who never runs out of energy, who always has energy. So when you're going through Christ, you just plugged in. You just plugged in to the socket. And now, oh, thank you, Lord. I got the joy. I got energy now. I, I can do this thing. I can do this thing because I can do all things through Christ. Get, get thee behind me, Satan. Go away, way my window. Go away, way my window, devil. Get thee behind me. I can do this thing. See, that's what you got to keep. Keep that in the forefront of your mind. As you're holding on and counting down the days. There's nothing wrong with put on your calendar. I cross out every day to know how much longer I got to left. And but what happens is when you keep crossing out the days you've been in victory in the fast, guess what? Eventually you have more days past you than ahead. And that gets exciting because each day you cross out, oh, it's another day of victory. Day one, another day of victory. Day two, Another day of victory. Day three, don't look at the whole 30 days. You'll get psyched out. Look at one day at a time. Like the word says, don't worry about tomorrow. Matthew 6, 13, mix, Matthew chapter 6. Don't worry about tomorrow. Worry about today. Make it through the fast today. Tomorrow, wake up. Okay. Hey, hey, I, 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 your name is. Welcome, welcome. See, when you look at one day at a time, fasting is not overwhelming. When you go, man, I got 30 days, 30 days of what? Oh my God, how am I going to make it? No, no, don't look at the whole 30 days. Look at one day at a time. One day at a time. Oh, I did it. Cross it out. A day, another day of victory. Well, thank you, Lord. Another day of victory. Now, here comes tomorrow. Now, tomorrow is now today. One day at a time. One day at a time. And before you know it, we'll be on day 30 saying hallelujah. 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 <laughs> See, see, that's that's why we gotta keep keep ourselves on fire, amen. I couldn't see the spelling, thank you, Alvria. I could I, I couldn't see the spelling, thank you, Julie Pepsi, for retyping that on my screen. Her name was hidden by the color, amen. So that's how we keep that's how we keep ourselves on fire for the Lord during the fasting and prayer attack. The devil's trying to keep us off our off our balance to make us give up, but we encourage ourselves in the Lord to keep going. Uh, other one, James, James 5, James 5, 13, 18. Turn to James 5, 13, 18, James 5. Because see, James 5, 13, 13 through 18 is anyone among you suffering then he must pray is anyone cheerful he is to sing praises is anyone among you sick then he must call for the elders of the church and they are to pray over him anointing him with oil in the name of jesus and the fervent prayers the prayer offered in faith will store the one who is sick and the lord will raise him up and if he has committed sins, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another. Pray for one another so what you may be healed. The effective prayer of the righteous man can accomplish much. Amen. And that's what we're doing. That's, that's why we keep praising and worshiping and praying for each other every day. Being obedient to the word. Because it, it just says right there the most important thing. Verse 16. Therefore, confess your sins to one another, pray for one another, so you may be healed. The effective prayer of the righteous man avails much. There's power in our prayer when we share and we pray with each other. Two more gathered in his name. He is in the midst. These are the ways we are we are supporting our, 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 uh, our iron sharpening iron in fellowship. As we come together every day and praise together, we worship together. You, you might come on fellowship one day and you feel kind of weak. Are kind of tired today but because everyone's praising jump right into praise and next thing you know 
you don't feel you don't feel down anymore you don't feel depressed anymore you the, it, 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 the joy of the lord is infectious when you get around other people who are going through the joy of the lord you may come in to praise man i got i got tired today i don't feel like praising today but everybody's like doo, 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 doo. all of a sudden you go well wait a minute wait a minute this kind of feels good next thing you know you shout out the praising because praise is infectious that's why i always say praise is what we do because the way to get through something is to praise your way through it because you give it all to god when you praise your way th through something you're giving the problem to the lord and you praise his name you say thank you jesus amen 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 that's right amen millie jehoshaphat exactly right remember when jehoshaphat and gideon they had worshipers and praisers in battle they they worshipers and praisers and both Jehoshaphat and Gideon, praisers and worshipers were as important as the soldiers themselves, because God knows it, it was all about until th uh, January 30th, Caleb, uh, the, all, the, all the month of January. Welcome, Caleb. January 30th is the end date, so that's why we that's why we hold on to this period. Now, the uh, the one other one, Luke five sixteen, Luke, Luke five, fifteen sixteen. Luke 5. So see, what we're trying to make ourselves do is when you do something long enough, when you do something long enough, it becomes a habit. So if you keep praying without ceasing, eventually it's going to be a habit. Because if you always keep prayer at the tip of your tongue, then when something happens to you, you automatically pray. See, we're trying to teach our flesh, I don't panic, I pray. I don't worry. I pray. I don't have fear. I pray. See, when you're teaching your flesh, instead of worldly reactions, fear, worry, stress. No, no. I have no fear. Stand still. That's what I'm teaching. We're teaching our flesh. Have no fear. Stand still. The flesh wants the panic attacks, insomnia. The flesh wants to go to negativity. But when you fast and pray, you're teaching your flesh. No, 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 no. I don't. I don't worry. I pray. I have no fear. Stand still. I have no fear of uh, uh, whatever it is. Whatever it is, have no fear. Stand still. Amen. Uh, Luke 5, chapter uh, 15, 16. Luke 5, 15, 16. Luke 5. Now, look, uh, look at, let's start at fi uh, verse 15. But the news about him was spreading even further. And large crowds were gathering to hear him and to be healed of their sickness. But Jesus himself would often slip away to the wilderness and pray. See, now right here, this shows that even though Jesus worked all those miracles, all the miracles Jesus worked, right here, even in the midst of all the miracles, what it said, verse 16, but Jesus himself would often slip away to the wilderness and pray because see before you go into any battle before you pray for somebody in healing you go to the father first he said i go to the father the father may be glorified you don't do anything on your own when you pray you go into the father through jesus christ and that power comes through you to move in the flesh in the world but you do we can do nothing on our own so we say in the name of jesus we just connected to the Father through Jesus Christ, and we go and we go somewhere in secret first, and talk to the Lord. Lord, I'm about to, I'm about to, I'm about to be a blessing to these people. Lord, Lord, I'm about to be, speak the word. I'm about to lay hands. Whatever it is you're about to do, go to the Father. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, I need you right now. Lord, I need you to speak through me. I need you to give me strength. I need, I need to be a blessing to these people. Let your light shine through me. Speak for me. Speak through me, Lord. Let your anointing come all over me and jump on them in Jesus' name. And then you go do. What you're about to do don't run out there without praying we can do nothing on our own whenever you're about to be a blessing to people go and get your supernatural strength from the lord to get the anointing and let the anointing flow through you give you strength and all you need to be a blessing to whoever the holy spirit is guiding you to bless and that's why jesus would often go off and get prayer because he's about to work some more miracles he i, I can imagine i can i can imagine Father God, oh yes, oh Father, I need more strength. Give me, give me a supernatural, supernatural strength. See, Father, Father, the Son of One. So He, He's already one with the Father because He's Son, 
the son part of the Trinity, but even still, being the son of God, he still got away from the group to get re-energized. Let me go work some more miracles. So let me just get, let me stand still for a minute, get my get some more miracle power back, and go back out and work some more miracles. So always remember, pray before you do something to be a blessing, because you're gonna be under attack because you're being a blessing. So you're praying for two reasons. You're praying for strength from the Father through Jesus Christ, and you're also praying for protection because when you are blessing the people, you're gonna be attacked. Let me let me tell you that right now. When you are a blessing to others, you will be attacked. So make sure you pray up before you bless people because the attack is coming because the devil doesn't want you to bless anybody. So whenever I come on, we pray before. That's why we have such prayer in fellowship because I'm praying for us during, during prayer. And then at the end, binding, loosing, because, you know, whenever you're sharing together as fellowship, we're coming together worldwide. We're coming together worldwide and praising God. God, you know the devil's mad because as we leave the fellowship, we leave on fire for the Lord for the day and we come back tomorrow and we get fired again. We get fired again. And that's why it's so many times this ministry has been under attack because the devil's trying to figure out how can I break this fellowship up? How can I break up this fellowship? And so that's why that's why the, the devil's working so hard in connection problems. Sometimes the phone has happened. All, the, all you got, you guys remember OG ones and twos. Remember all the things we went through in this fellowship to stay connected? I had to move to different areas, connection problems. Sometimes things wouldn't work. I mean, those aren't accidents. We're sharing the word of God worldwide. And when you share the word of God to parts of the world who doesn't even know who Jesus is, that's a problem for the devil. The devil says, wait a minute, this person, this person is reaching people in areas where there is no Jesus. Wait a minute, I gotta figure out how to stop that. And so that's why we value your prayers. The fervent prayers of the righteous avails much. That's why when you pray for ministry, your prayers are totally appreciated because you're praying for us to be able to make it through all the attacks that try to keep us from coming on six days a week to be a blessing, to pray together, to praise together. So when you're praying, we don't take any of your prayers for granted. We say thank you for every single day of prayer. And then you're also praying for your own protection. Because when you leave fellowship, you leave fellowship on fire. And now you can be a blessing to someone else. So that's why I always see binding and loosing at the end to protect you from being attacked. Just because we came together today on fire for the Lord and you're about to go back to work, go back home, and now you can be a blessing to someone else. I ask for a hedge of protection over you as you leave the fellowship because we're all in, we're all in the blessing business. Not just me, you're a blessing just because you got the light of the Lord all over you. If you come here six days a week, live or archive, you got the light of the Lord on you right now. I'm telling you that. You don't get motivated. You don't get motivated to come here six days a week if you're not on fire for the Lord. Some people say, six days a week? How can you do that six days a week? If you're on fire for the Lord, I'll do 22 days a week. <laughs> if there was a two, if there was a 22 day week, if you're on fire for the Lord, you don't care how many days in a week. Because the fire, the Holy Ghost fire, keeps you burning, keeps you going, keeps you energized, keeps your joy. That's why, that's why you got to keep praised up. You keep praised up because we're always going to be under attack because we're in the blessing business. Our part, remember, that, remember there's a phrase, you may not know this phrase, he who picks a rose must accept the thorns it bears. Remember, remember this phrase. He who picks a rose must accept the thorns it bears. When you're in the blessing business, the thorn is you're going to be attacked. Now, we have victory because the, the, the key thing with us, because we're in the blessing business through Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter what the thorn is because we got victory over whatever attack the devil throws our way. So we just know that when you're in the blessing business, you got to stay prayed up. And will you remember that? When you're in the blessing business, stay prayed up. And that protects you from whatever attack is coming because you're being a blessing to others. And that's what we do. That's why we do this every day, why we praise every day and pray every day. And that's what I want to leave you with. The last one, Romans 8, 26. We get ready to close. Romans 8, 26. 
eight, twenty six, twenty seven. Romans eight twenty six. Now, of course, <clears throat> when you're fasting and praying, when you have no fear, stand still. You gotta, you gotta stand still and listen to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does a lot of talking when you stand still. That's why we gotta train ourselves to stand still. Have no fear, no fear. Get the world out. Have no fear. Have no fear. Stand still. Stand still so you can hear the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will always talk to you. The Holy Spirit is always guiding you. Always talking to you. Amen. Let's start at verse uh, 26, 27. Romans 8, 26, 27. In the same way, the Spirit also helps our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we should. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Amen. So see, the Holy Spirit is intercedes. See, two types of things are happening. When we have no fear, stand still. The Holy Spirit is interceding to Jesus. Jesus is interceding to the Father. That's how the, the Trinity works together. The Holy Spirit in us, when we go to the Holy Spirit, and we're lifting our petitions up, and we're talking to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is already interceding for us to Jesus. He says, come to me through me. Now Jesus is interceding for us to the Father. So the Trinity is working full force. When you have no fear, stand still. Because when you're standing still, you're listening for the Holy Spirit's guidance. And you lift up your petition to the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is in us. And it goes through Jesus Christ, who intercedes for us to the Father. That's what he's talking about in John 14, 14, 13, 14. That's what he's talking about. I go to the Father that the Father may be glorified. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. So the, these, this is how we must remember who we are in Christ. You hear me say it all the time. Just remember who you are in Christ. Whole armor of God. Psalm 91 protection. And, and the, the authority to trample over all the power of the enemy. That's who we are. That's the power we've been given. And we got to remember it. And the way to remember it is stay connected in prayer, confess it every day, speak it every day, read the word every day, talk to the Lord every day, praise every day, worship every day. Whatever it is, do something every day. Stay connected to the Lord. Especially, especially in prayer and fasting. Because that's how we make it through it. Make it through that time. Because when you stay connected, you don't feel the hunger as much. You will feel the, 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 the distractions because if your mind is stayed on him, mind is stayed on him because we trust you, Lord, to help me make it through this 30 days. Because when I trust the Lord with all my heart, lean not to my own understanding, in all my ways I acknowledge you, Lord, and you will direct my path. You will show me how to make it the 30 days. You'll give me strength to make it the 30 days. I do all things through Christ who strengthens me for 30 days. See, when you, when you keep speaking the word, you keep speaking the word into each day as you go and fast and pray each day next thing you know will be day 29 feeling just as good feeling closer to the lord feeling more powerful in god because we've been praying more during this time and that's why i want to start this lesson off this week at the beginning of our prayer time and fasting to remember these things as you pray each day as you go through each day just keep keep talking to the lord throughout the day throughout the day, whenever, however, however long you want to do it. Amen. And just keep speaking it. Keep speaking it. Keep speaking it. Because, man, faith comes by what? Hearing. Speak it. Don't think it. Speak it. Speak the word. Speak out loud. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. So the more you hear yourself, that's how you encourage yourself. Because you hear, the, you hear yourself say the word. You will hear yourself praying. You will hear yourself talking to the Lord. Faith comes by hearing, not thinking. Faith comes by hearing, whether it's me, yourself. However, when you hear the word of God out of your mouth, your own mouth, my mouth, anyone else praying, you get empowered. Because the more word you hear, the more powerful you get. The more word you hear, 
the more powerful you get. The more time with the Lord, the more powerful you get. The more you pray, the more powerful you get. Can you see why now at the end of end of a 30 day fasting and praying, you see now why you get more power? Because you're you're more dedicated in time with God. And when you and when we get to the end of it, don't go back to what you used to do. No. When you get to the end of every fasting period, that's a new level. Hold that new level of praying. When you when you finish fasting and praying at the end of day 30, keep that. And next time we pray and fast, you'll get even more prayer power. See, some people, they get to the end of the fast and they go back to doing what they used to do. Which, man, wait a minute, you go, wait a minute. You just, you just reverse all the hard work you just did. The reason you pray, you pray and fast is you're moving to another level. And when you finish the fast, stay there. Don't go backward. Stay at a new level. And the next time you pray and fast, you go even higher. And see, that's how you build your faith, how you build your strength, your prayer power. Don't stop fasting and go back to the old man. No, no. The new thing. See, once you get to day 30, guess what? Who we are right now at day 30, who we are right now is an old thing. So at day 30, if you prayed up and a super praiser, that's a new thing. Who, is, who you are now, I have trouble waking up. I have trouble praising. That's an old thing. Old things have passed away. On day 30, behold, all things become new. A new pray level. A new worship level. A new relationship with God. And that's what I'm going to leave you with as we close. Leave you with that. And that's what it's all about. As we go through these 30 days, stay strong in the Lord. Keep on praising and keep on worshiping. And that's what it's all about. Amen. Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for another day of praise. Another day of worship. Another day in your face, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this fellowship. As we stay together on day five, going to day 30, Lord, staying on fire for you, Lord, understanding the importance of staying on fire. Because we know, Lord, the more we stay focused on you, there will be no problems making it through this fast, Lord. Because we're committing right now as a fellowship to keep our mind stayed on you for every day of this prayer and fasting, Lord, and beyond. Not just every day in the fast, but a new lifestyle, a new walk with you, a closer walk with you as a lifestyle, Lord. We're now moving to a new level in this fasting period, Lord, because we're praying more, we're worshiping more. And Lord, bless every fellowship member who can hear my voice. It doesn't matter when they start, Lord, even if they start today, the Lord, bless them to this day forward through this fasting period to be stronger and stronger in you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Of course, before we close, of course, I got to include that someone's been watching this entire time, the past couple of hours. Someone's been watching who does not know our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Someone is listening to this entire message overwhelmed right now by darkness, heaviness, depression, worry, fear. All you've been doing the entire time, all you've been doing the entire time is crying because you're overwhelmed by the darkness in this world. You may be here as a backslider in guilt because for whatever reason, you chose to leave God and go back into the world of sin. And now the devil's knocking you every which way but loose and telling you, you can never go back to God because you feel God. You can never go back. And that is a lie from the pit of hell. No one is perfect. All of us have fallen short. So if you've been walking as a backslider and you want to come back to the Lord, just say the prayer of salvation over again. And there's nothing the devil can do to stop you. So whether you're walking in depression, heaviness and guilt, or backslider, want to come back to the Lord, Pray with me. Repeat after me. Father God, forgive me for the wrong I've done and the wrong I've been. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe he died on the cross for me and my sins and was raised from the dead. I want Jesus to be Lord and Savior of my life. And I commit right now. I will not do a single thing in life or make a single decision in life without lifting up you first. Create in me, O oh Lord, a clean heart and remove from me anything and everything 
that is not like you. In Jesus' name. And if you say that prayer sincerely, your spirit is not right to receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a part of God that lives inside of us to teach us, to guide us, the things of God. The Holy Spirit will show you people, activities, and things you're doing right now in the world which is bringing in all the darkness into your life. It will show you exactly what you need to do to correct it. Find new friends who love the Lord and can teach you how to live in this world, loving the Lord and not loving the world. Amen. And before you know it, you'll feel the peace of God come over you, letting you know it's going to be all right. God's got this. God's got you. Amen. Right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we as a fellowship rebuke and bind the spirits of retribution, revenge, retaliation, and backlash, and every other demonic spirit, named unnamed, seen or unseen, who may attack anyone in this fellowship because of the participation in this fellowship. And we cast you all, all you demonic spirits, we cast you out of our mind, out of our spirit, out of our home, out of our families, all back to the pit of hell from which you came, in Jesus' name. And Father God, loose, Lord, loose into the fellowship, loose unspeakable joy, loose peace beyond understanding, loose restoration, Lord, restore, restore every area of our life, restore our joy, restore our peace, our health and well-being, loose reconciliation, heal marriages and families right now, Lord, who are falling apart because of the devil's attack, Lord. We can sell those marriages and families and bring joy back, forgiveness back, communication back. And Lord, keep a hedge of protection over all the families and marriages who are not falling apart, but who the devil still attacks every day, Lord. Loose supernatural healing, physical healing, emotional healing. By your stripes, we were healed. We speak it every day, Lord. We speak it every day. I believe I receive my healing. I believe I receive my healing in Jesus' name. Speak it every day. Live it every day. See it every day. Until it manifests your life. Loose. Supernatural overflow. Financial breakthrough. Supernatural debt cancellation. Lord, let your blessings of abundance. Blessings of abundance. Rain down, Lord. Rain down on the fellowship right now. For whatever financial need, large or small, fellowship members may have. For you shall supply all our need according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not want for anything when the Lord is my shepherd. For we're the head and not the tail. We are above and not beneath. We're the lender and not the borrower. We're blessed that we may be a blessing to others. We are out of debt. All of our needs are met. We are plenty more to put in store. We are children of God and nothing shall by any means hurt us or block our blessings in any way. And finally, Lord, we thank you for a miracle, Lord. We thank you for a miracle, Lord. Each fellowship member has a miracle they've been praying for for so long. And now we know as a fellowship, every day, spend time with a miracle. See your miracle every day, see it, believe it, receive it to your heart. And as you receive it to your heart, start expecting a miracle. Expect your miracle every day. We don't know the when. We will never know the when. But, like I said before, because we don't know when, that means any day we wake up, any day we wake up could be the day of the manifestation of the miracle we've been praying for for so long. So, Lord, all these things we ask, all these things we ask, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let the fellowship say amen, amen, amen.